<laughs> We're live, just barely. Hello, Ken Hovind here in the crew at Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama. Beautiful day out there today. Uh, April, what is it, February? February the 17th, 2020. Welcome. We're the folks who believe the Bible is true, and the evolution theory is the dumbest and most dangerous religion in the history of the world. There's never been a more dangerous idea than to teach your kids there's no God and you came from a rock 4.6 billion years ago. It's destroying our culture, destroying our educational system. And we're here to defend the Bible as being true. All right, Brother Dave, you got a so song for us here tonight. So <clears throat> sing loud to cover up for me. <clears throat> Send the light. It's Acts chapter 1 tonight about getting the gospel out. Okay. <clears throat> There the call comes ringing o'er the restless waves, send the light, send the light. There are souls to rescue, there are souls to save, send the light, send the light, send the light, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine, let it shine from shore to shore, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Second verse. We have heard the Macedonian call today. Send the light, send the light. And a golden offering at the cross we lay. Send the light, send the light. Send the light, send the, light the blessed gospel light. Let it shine from shore to shore. Send the Lord, send the light, the blessed gospel light, let it shine forevermore. Hey, man, thank you, brother. It's a blessing to have some music here. <clears throat> I get a lot of requests, but I sing anyway. All right, Steve slides up and visitors tonight. Let's see, Joshua and Elise from New Jersey, right? Jersey? Yeah. All right, yeah, I think I need one of them. Okay, praise God. <clears throat> Something for the throat. All right. Thank you for coming. Let's oh, push a button here. And if you want to sponsor a staff lunch for Sunday, take our staff out. We'll, we'll, we'll promote your business right here. Say lunch this Sunday provided by, and we'll mention your name, a company name, or something like that. To all the staff here, if you want to walk around the lake after Bible study, we're going to take a staff planning walk. Uh, and uh, right after Bible study, take off for one, one mile, one lap around the lake. <clears throat> the Woe series of videotapes is 12 DVDs in here. Um, this is what I covered on my book, What on Earth is About to Happen for Heaven's Sake. It's 100 bucks. If you want to get it during the month of February, we will throw in for free the timeline, the chart. Uh, Julie will put that in just for February orders. This is uh, along with the book. And on the back side is all kinds of cool stuff that goes along with the book on what on earth is about to happen. So if you're curious about what the Bible teaches about the future, I poured everything I had into that. And then if you want to get the regular seminar series, uh, I guess I left that someplace. I don't know where that is. That's okay. Forget it. We're going to go on here. Dinosaur Adventureland in Lenox, Alabama is open for free. This is uh, <clears throat> main front gates. Uh, I got the pink or blue dinosaur. My wife has the pink one. Your mama can explain it to you later. Dinosaur Adventureland is a L-shaped piece of property, about 140 acres. It's an old gravel pit. And it, a man bought it and gave it to us. What a blessing it's been. We've had hundreds of tours for thousands of visitors from all 50 states and 50 foreign countries. And brother, we'll give you and your wife the tour. Uh, where'd he go? I guess he's in there next time, all right, with tomorrow morning. So you can come take the tour around here. Uh, I like giving it on the Can Am. <clears throat> I wish you'd left the keys earlier. I, I took the keys with me, brother. There's a reason for that. Julie, our secretary, will probably answer the phone when you call Dinosaur Ditcherland. That's her picture there. I baptized her in the lake about. Uh, Two and a half years ago, I guess. And Jeff does a lot of our carpentry work. We have had 80 baptized here. We just want to get everybody saved and converted. Thank you, man. I just showed you a picture, Julie, of you getting baptized. How long ago was that? Wow, that was two years. <clears throat> yeah, over two years ago. Well, about two years ago now. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, there's an aerial view of our property, one of the lakes. Uh, if it looks like a dinosaur, we have all kinds of fun stuff to do around here. We fed visitors from all 50 states and 50 foreign countries now. A couple quick announcements. We need a track loader. We're looking to sell the excavator and buy a track loader. We need a dump trailer. We have a dump truck. I like a dump trailer also around here. Uh, give the real tour. Let's see. If you want to help us to open for free, you can take Shackley Vitamins, and we get a percentage of that. They send us something. So uh, go to our website, Dr. Dino, and go down to Shackley and call Chad and say, I want to get some vitamins. How do I name your health problem? He'll tell you what you need to take. He's really, really good. Need some miniature horses. Did somebody, did that lady, 
in Mobile going to give us one, you think? I hope so. Uh, we'll see. Okay. You have, you have tours of dinosaurs. That take a long time with a miniature horse. <laughs> Birds, that aviary is looking great. You only got, what, six parakeets now, right? Or five? Five parakeets. Five parakeets. And you're getting some more? What are you getting? Um, well, I've got a lady in around Massachusetts. She said that she would... Uh, Donate us a set of lovebirds. A set of lovebirds from Massachusetts. And oh, yeah. I have a lady out and or a gentleman out in Texas says he's got a cockatoo. Oh, a cockatoo? Yeah. We want to get a, what a wide variety. It represent day five of the creation when God made the birds. So we got fish and birds. And so we want kids to go in there and go, oh, wow. And we'll train them to come land right on your hand and eat right out of your hand or try to. It's actually a cockatoo or three. A cockatoo or three. Yeah. Whoa. Okay. That's quite a thought, Paul. All right. Oh. Um, we have three emus that are incredibly friendly. Uh, they want to be petted like they won't leave you alone if you go in there. So we want everything to be ha kids to come and say, wow, that was fun. I got to pet an emu. The cows are a little skittish. We have six donkeys, not quite so friendly as the rest of them. So I have six very friendly goats. They love for you to rub, rub their back and anything. Let's see. The baby goat climbed up into the feed trough there. Uh, there's one of the pot belly pigs. <clears throat> There's the two baby pot belly pigs. Boy, they squeal like they've been stuck when you get close to them. Yeah, yeah. And the rabbits. I'm saying we got some baby rabbits today. Three. Three? So far, that's all I can. It's three. Okay, good. Anyway, you can support our ministry by joining our 777 Club. And go out to drdino.com and click on the button. I want to join them. Be a member of the 777. Make any checks to CSE. Okay. Uh, we also need one of these. Is anyone missing a mother-in-law? <laughs> it'll take a few minutes to soak in like oh oh ho, ho. okay <clears throat> the old testament is everything before jesus came and there are 39 books in the old testament in the bible starting with the book of genesis <clears throat> jesus came split history and now the new testament is everything after jesus came it has four gospels the first four matthew mark luke and john we just finished yesterday the book of luke now, Luke, the medical doctor, also wrote the book of Acts, which is just simply short for actions. This is the actions of the disciples. What did they do after Jesus left? He told them what to do, and did they do it? Well, yeah, we're going to see in a minute here. So Acts chapter 1, slide number 73. Let me get up to there, slide 73. Right okay. First, we're going to finish with the end of the book of Luke, or the beginning. Luke started off his book by writing, for as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are surely believed among us, even as they delivered them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things from the very first, to write unto thee in order, most excellent Theophilus. So he writes, he says, look, a lot of people are writing about what just happened, Jesus' life. It's since I was there from the beginning, it seems like I should write a book too. So Luke is writing to Theophilus, whoever that is. We mentioned last time, <clears throat> Theo means God. Philio means love, like Philadelphia, the city of brotherly shove, uh, or love. I mean, how far are you from Philadelphia, brother? You're not too far? Uh, two hours. Two hours. It is the city of brotherly shove these days, isn't it? Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, so Luke, Luke wrote the book of Luke to Theophilus. And there's arguments, is this a particular man, or is this anybody who loves God? I think both applications would be fine. I don't think it matters. I just lost interest. Okay. He said, so I'm writing that you may know the certainty of those things that you've been instructed. So that's book of Luke, how it starts. Now we go to the book of Acts. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus. So he's talking about the previous book that he just wrote. Of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Now, the 12 disciples are also called apostles. It seems to be a synonymous uh, name, like dad and father. <clears throat> to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, that would be his suffering, you know, the passion of Christ is the story of his crucifixion, by many infallible proofs. Now, keep in mind, Luke is a medical doctor, and he's writing this. He said he showed himself to be alive with many infallible proofs. It was proven he's alive. Being seen of them 40 days. Now, this will come into play later. After his resurrection, for 40 days, he walked around among the people. They saw him. This is Jesus that rose from the dead. One time, 500 people saw him at one time. So <clears throat> then when he finally ascended to heaven after 40 days, <clears throat> he told them, 
to go tarry in Jerusalem and wait until the Holy Spirit comes upon them. And later we'll see in chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost. Penta means five or 50. So on the 50th day, the Holy Spirit came down. Now we'll get into that in chapter 2. So for 40 days, he's walking around among them. Then he went to heaven. Ten days later, the Holy Spirit came down. <clears throat> being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, you've heard of me. He's telling them, guys, you wait in Jerusalem until you get the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. For John, talking about John the Baptist, <clears throat> truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? Now keep in mind, most of these Jews were sick and tired of the Romans running their country. And they, the whole time they followed him, they thought, he's going to be the king. He's going to throw the Romans out and get our country back. And they were great patriots. He had one guy, Simon the Zealot. They were the anti-Roman, blow up the bridges kind of guys. But he also had Matthew the tax collector as one of his disciples. <clears throat> they put those two together to go soul winning. So here they are. Jesus has been going around for 40 days now. And they said, Lord, are you finally going to restore the kingdom to Israel? Or in other words, are you going to throw the Romans out of here? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. <clears throat> Verse 8. But ye shall receive power... <clears throat> After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. How do you tell if a person is full of the Holy Ghost? Because they run around like a chicken with their head cut off? No. The fruits of the Spirit. Huh? Because the fruits of the Spirit. You're a witness. You want to tell other people about him. He said, when the Holy Ghost, you're going to receive power when the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses. So someone tells me, oh, Brother Hovind, I got filled with the Holy Spirit. I say, great. Who'd you witness to? Amen. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. Back to the kingdom, that was where they got confused. The kingdom means a rulership, a, a, an authority figure. When Jesus said the kingdom of God is at hand, it's in your heart. That's right. Who, kingdom of God is within you. Who do you want to follow? Do you want to follow the ways of the world, or do you want to follow the kingdom of God? Well, see, he's going to take over this whole world and establish his kingdom on earth. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's going to happen, but it's a little ways off yet. All right, verse number eight. <clears throat> he said, "Ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth." And while he had yet, while he had spoken these things, when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel. So he said, "You know, Jesus is being taken up in a cloud." And these two guys in white apparel, probably angels, though the Bible doesn't say that. They said, you men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner. What does that mean? He's coming back the same way he's leaving. He left in a cloud. He's coming back in a cloud. We see that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. He comes back in a cloud. You see that at the end of the book of Mark, Matthew, and Mark, and Luke. At the end of those three chapters, they asked him, Lord, when are you coming? What's the sign? When are you coming? What's the, Miss Matthew, Mark, and Luke? He tells about the time of tribulation they're going to have, and then it talks about him coming back in a cloud, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. So he, sh he shall come back in like manner as he's seen him go into heaven. Then returned they unto Jerusalem, which from the mount called Olivet, which is the Mount of Olives, that's dead center in that map. You can see Mount of Olives right there is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. So it's only about a half a mile, a quarter mile maybe, not very far. And they're going to go to the upper. Now it's been discovered that the upper room was in the lower part of Jerusalem, uh, in the Hin Hinnon Valley, uh, there, with, uh, inside the city walls. But And they returned unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, uh, verse 13. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room. Where abode? Both Peter and James and John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, Simon Zelotes, and Judas, the brother of James. That's 11. How come there aren't 12? 
Judas, Judas killed himself. Yeah, it's 12 now. 11. I mean, 11. These all continued with one accord. This is all the disciples fit in a Honda. No, I'm sorry. Uh, in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And I mentioned there are six Marys in the Bible. You got to kind of keep them straight. And with his brethren. See, Jesus had at least four brothers. It names them a couple times in the Gospels. The Catholics want to say Mary is the perpetual virgin. Oh, then Joseph gets the prize, not Mary. Gee. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number of names together were about 120. So there's 120 of them gathered together. Now watch what happened. This is a critical. Verse 15, Peter stands up in the middle of this crowd, 120 people. And he said, <clears throat> men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, it would be King David, spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Remember, Judas guided the soldiers in and kissed him and said, that's the man right there. For he was numbered with us and hath obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gushed out. Want to hold it. How did Judas die? All his bowels gushed out. When you read the story in Matthew 27, and he cast down the 30 pieces of silver that he got in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. Now, the atheists love to say, see, there's a contradiction in the Bible. Which, which way did he die? Did he burst asunder and his guts fall out? Or did he hang himself? Contradiction in the Bible. How did Judas die? Was it from hanging or disembowelment? Well, guys, it's... Very simple, okay? I know you don't want an answer, and you wouldn't believe me if I told you, so I'm wasting time with some of you folks, because the only language you speak is hammer to the head. But, by the way, we got a new prop. We found a cure to, for evolution to work. I haven't shown these yet, have I? Somebody sent me salt and pepper shaker. One is millions of years. The other is billions of years. If it won't work, just add a little bit. Just add a few billion years, add a few million. You can change you can change a frog to a prince. Yeah, just a few billion years. Okay. So how could this be true? Did he hang himself or did he fall down and his guts fall out? Well, option one, he hung himself and the rope broke. So he fell down and his butts. Okay. Option two, he hung himself and the animals came to eat him and his bowels gushed out. Option three, he hung himself and the branch broke. So he fell down and busted open. Option four, he hung himself and his head came off. So he fell down and his bowels gushed out. Option five, he hung himself and he rotted away. We don't know where he hung himself. Might have been out in the woods. Nobody found him. And he fell down and his bowels gushed out. There's five different ways to solve it. I don't know which it is. But it's not, it's not proven that it's a contradiction in the Bible. Like, duh. All right. Yes, sir. What exactly does it mean by falling headlong? <laughs> I headlong instead of head up, I guess headlong, uh, face first would be my guess. Dangerous way to fall. I think we still use that word headlong, you know, um, head first. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> so verse 19. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch that that field is called in their proper tongue a seldoma, that is to say, the field of blood. So everybody in Jerusalem knew where Judas had fallen down and busted open. They wouldn't go near that field. That's the field of blood. For it is written in the book of Psalms, <clears throat> this is Peter talking now to the group, let his habitation be desolate and let no man dwell therein. So I don't know if they still to this day don't do anything on that field. I should have looked that up, but it could be they still know where that was. And his bishopric, that would be his position as a bishop or a leader in the church, let another take. Wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, this is Peter talking. He said, remember in the book of Psalms, he said somebody else is supposed to take his job. So Peter says, hey, Judas is gone. Somebody else is supposed to take his job. Peter says, wherefore, of these men which have accompanied with us all the time that the Lord went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John, unto the same day that he was taken up for, uh, from us, must one be ordained? So Peter says, hey, guys, we need to pick another disciple. 
He needs to be somebody who's been with us from the baptism of John all the way. We have to ordain another 12th disciple to take Judas's place, to be a witness with us of his resurrection. And they appointed two, Joseph, called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. So they picked two guys that met the qualifications, uh, Joseph and Matthias. And they prayed <clears throat> and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of all men, show whether of these two thou hast chosen, that he may take part in this ministry and apostleship, from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles. Guess what? Matthias is never heard from again. This is one of the dumbest ways to make a decision. You can learn a great lesson from Acts chapter 1. All of us can. How not to decide God's will for your life. Keep in mind, this is before they had the Holy Spirit. Did the Holy Spirit tell Peter to get up and make this announcement, we need to pick another disciple? No. He's doing this on his own. So before they had the Holy Spirit to guide them, Peter took it upon himself to decide we need a 12th disciple. They set the qualifications. They said, you know, had to be somebody from the baptism of John all the way through. Number three, they selected two that met their arbitrary qualifications, Barsabas and Saul and Matthias. Then they prayed for God to guide the lot, the casting lots like rolling dice. They cast lots and Matthias was chosen. He is never heard from again. I want you to see the sequence and how we do the very same thing and make huge mistakes sometimes. First of all, the Holy Spirit wasn't guided. They decided they needed to get somebody. You do the same thing when you need a car. Let's see. Without the Lord leading, we decide we need a new car. So we set the qualifications. It's got to be a four-door automatic V8 engine. Then we select two, the BMW M760i for $880,000 or the Mercedes F015 for $10 million. Then we pray for God to guide the coin toss. <laughs> then we flip the coin and get the Mercedes. On the third flip. On the third flip. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> Do you see the problem here, though? What's wrong with their sequence of events? They should have prayed first. You don't start off and say, we need another disciple. First of all, you pray, Lord, do we need another disciple? Lord, do I need a car? Lord, do I need whatever? So they had the, they had the sequence all wrong. Number four should have been number one. <clears throat> they should have waited until the Lord guided them in chapter two. We do the same thing when they want to pick a girlfriend. Guys do this. I, I taught high school 15 years. The guys say, Brother Hoven. I got to find me a wife. Set the qualifications. Got to be tall, blonde, a beauty queen. Then they select two. Should it be Sally or Sue? Then we pray for God to guide the coin toss. We flip a coin and we get Sue. Or maybe you get Sue. Or maybe you get Sue. You wanted blonde. <clears throat> First, you got to say, Lord, do I need one? If I need one, would you please bring the right one? They had the whole thing wrong. If they had waited until the Holy Spirit came down in the next chapter, he would have guided them and told them, guess wait. He had, he had somebody coming. The apostle Paul was supposed to take Judas's place. But that didn't happen until chapter 9. But they, they got over anxious. How many of you have ever been over anxious to get something and you went ahead of the Lord and you got what you wanted and it turned out to be a big mistake? You should not have done that one. Oh, gee. That was a mistake. <laughs> we do that all the time. So I think from Acts chapter 1, we can learn a great lesson here to wait on God until he's ready. Because Jesus was with them for 40 days. They had to go back and wait for 10 more days for the Holy Spirit to come on the day of Pentecost. But Peter, during those 10 days, got anxious. Hey, we need to pick another disciple. Now, Peter <clears throat> had a good spirit. He wanted he wanted the best for the ministry, for the church. He was trying to do what he thought was right, but this was a big mistake. We just watch out that you don't do something like that. Parents, you can use this lesson from Acts chapter one to teach your kids. They said, boy, I got to have a new car. I got to have a girlfriend. I got to have a husband. I got to have whatever. Get the sequence right. Pray first. 
not fourth. By the time they already narrowed it down to two, and then they prayed about it, how's God supposed to get in that? What if it was neither one? Which in that case it was. So anyway, Acts chapter one, that's the end of the chapter. Any questions or comments from this group here? Yes, sir. And so back at the beginning of the chapter, it pretty much lays out the qualifications for apostleship. And that even applies today with all these yahoos running around labeling themselves apostles. First, they had to be chosen, and then Jesus showed himself. And like with the 11, he showed himself to them. He also showed himself to Paul. True. So On the road to, the road to Damascus, yeah. Apostles today, they're full of it. All kinds of people claim they're an apostle today. I just, yeah. A good point. Okay, anything else? All right, we're going to take a walk around the lake. Come on down and join us if you want to come visit Dinosaur Adventure Land. Come on down. You were here a couple years ago? Never been here. Now, <clears throat> brother, I don't know if I should say this on camera or not. I, I'll go ahead. I have wanted for years to build the world's tallest dinosaur. I'm talking 100 feet tall. I think I, I've looked all over Lennox. Nobody has a 100-foot dinosaur in Lennox. Um out of our 35 people, average age 62. Tell the folks here what you do for a living. Uh, professional rope access technician. So we're a, a rope access technician, the big, huge towers that, you know, the, you rappel down, up and down them and go inside and fix them. And climb for fun, yeah. You climb for fun. Yeah, that's right. and, we all and you do this all summer and fall, and then in the winter you'd have time to come down and build us the world's tallest dinosaur. Is that right? Oh, yeah, I would. I think I wanted the whole. I've already got plans drawn up. I've had two engineers look at it. Oh, okay. nice. Both of them said, Hoven, you are certifiably insane, but this this will work. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, the outside would all be rock climbing. <clears throat> oh, wow. cool. Inside would be a bookstore. The tail would be a water slide down into the lake. And from the under the chin, you go repelling. Oh, yeah, I was going for that right there. Yeah. There you go. Uh, all right. Yes, sir. Is a zip line. And the top should be a zip line. Yeah, he should hold the zip yeah. line for the line out of <laughs> I want to have three places under the head where we can, if we see a hurricane coming, we'll send out three cables to go out to a 50-ton you know, block of concrete. A weather vane on the top. A weather vane, yeah. <laughs> Camera up there, flame shoot out of the mouth. Oh, yeah. So we need that. All right, <laughs> see you tomorrow. <laughs> See you tomorrow, folks. Come visit Dinosaur Adventureland. I tell people, we don't really have a plan around here. What I do, <clears throat> I eat a lot of pizza with peanut butter on it before I go to bed. And you wake up at 2 in the morning with these cool ideas. That's, <laughs> that's how the whole place has been built. And it's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> it's a good, come on down. See you tomorrow. Bye.